Hello again, everybody. Dallas, Tennessee. We are back for part two of what we were going to be making with the candied lemon peel that I did in the previous video. We're going to be making orange sugar cookies, except they're going to be lemon sugar cookies because I didn't have any oranges. We have got two sticks of unsalted butter in our KitchenAid mixer. And to that, we are going to be adding one and a half cups of sugar. And we're going to get that creaming together. The butter is at room temperature. Start that, get it going. And let me give you a quick look. This is the book we're using. And this is the recipe we're doing. I can get it in here. How great our light is. It calls for one cup of fat, which that's going to be our butter, one and a half cups of sugar, three eggs, one cup of finely chopped candied citrus peel, right there. And that was fun chopping up. It would not chop up in my food processor. I had to do it all by hand with a knife. I don't know if it's as fine as what they would like it to be, but it's as fine as it's going to get. Uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, four to five cups of sifted flour. Now, I've already pre-sifted my flour. I've got about four cups in there. I've got another cup sitting off to the side, and I've added the salt and the baking powder to that already. We're going to need two-thirds a cup of milk and one teaspoon of lemon or orange extract. We're going to use lemon. So, okay, right now I've got my butter caking up in there, so we need to get a spoon out and kind of knock that out. I'm going to unlock it so get it out of there. I always love how the butter clumps up in the paddle. And we're going to start adding our eggs. Mix a little more. this stuff all over me. Bit. Sorry, I saved my eggshells. I rinse them out and put them in my garden. Now it says to cream the fat, add sugar, eggs, citrus peel, and then dry ingredients alternating with the milk and extract. So let's, uh, now that's that mixed in pretty good. Um, I'm going to dump our candy citrus in there. Oh, it's all go in that way. Sugar and everything. Oh, sorry, I tried to chop it up and knock off most of the sugar, so that's just really not the way to go. Alright, let me get some milk out. So one thing I did not set out ready to get. Okay, that looks like that's mixed in pretty good. here. So, well, okay. That's 
that's looking pretty good. I'm going to add the first bit of flour without the paddle on. In there. And I do have my oven preheating. It calls for a hot oven. It says moderately hot oven, which is 400 degrees for them. And I'm going to line some, pay, uh, some cookie sheets with either some parchment paper or uh, non-stick foil. So, alright, got a little of that in there. Put a little milk. That mix in. Got some flour in there. in really well. I don't think I'm going to need the extra flour. I might. That's a little soft because it calls for you to I want you to roll and cut or shape into balls and flatten out. I'm going to do the balls and flatten out. Let's see how this dough is looking. That's pretty soft. extract in there. Maybe a little bit more flour to kind of help stiffen this up some. out this would be too soft I think for rolling and I think it'd be too soft for shaping I may I may just do these as drop cookies <laughs> I like drop cookies better anyway Oops. finger and I don't want to put too much more flour in there mmm good better Pretty tasty so let me finish getting this all mixed together and get my cookie sheets ready and we'll bring you back when I started putting them on the trays. Alright, I think I figured out right quick you really should have a chilled butter for this because there's no way I'd roll these out and cut them and there's no way I'm going to roll them into balls and flatten them. So I'm going to do these kind of drop cookies. Uh, soft as they are, they're going to spread out anyway so I don't think it really matters that much and I've already got one tray done I did it on parchment paper I'm going to experiment and see how this one does on uh, non-stick foil <clears throat> simply because I really hate wrestling with parchment paper and I promise y'all my, my hands are clean I, I've washed them Let's here and spoon this out this stuff is so soft so if you make this recipe <clears throat> 
use cold butter or allow time for the dough to chill in the refrigerator for a little bit. Never fails, does it? Never ever fails. Now she wants to go out. Thankfully, husband's here. He's going to let her out for me. Out quite far enough, but I'm make do. all right. There we go. Um, like I said, the tub in this oven is supposed to preheat to 400. I have a cranky oven that runs a bit hot, so I'm going to put mine at 375. I'm going to check them in five minutes. So I'm going to put these first trays in. I have to do one at a time because I have a really small oven. If you get a Gen Air. Just be forewarned, you lose a lot of oven space for that griddle attachment thing that I never use. So we'll be back after we've checked the cookies. Well, I've got the first two batches out of the oven. Uh, I can see right now that I probably need to chill this dough. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator and try this again tomorrow night so it'll have all day to chill in the refrigerator these these are good um, they're a little dark around the edges I really have to watch my oven in fact the second batch these are still hot out of the oven yeah that one's burnt really really good so puppies will probably get those Ugh, just disgusting when I do that and, then, and they didn't stay in as long as the first batch so yeah makes no no sense to me, but I have a, like I said, I have a very cranky oven. Um, these are a little puffy, but they cooked all the way through. Um, husband's already been in and grabbed a second one, so apparently they, they meet with his approval. Um, he doesn't normally come back for seconds if he doesn't really like it. I can see why this would be considered a, well, it says, it's called it teaspoon savings. I would actually call these more of a tea time cookie than a sugar cookie. Maybe if we, if I sprinkled some sugar on them to give them that sugar cookie look. Um, don't know. I'll have to think about that. But anyway, we're going to set this a project, a project aside for this evening and try to take it, and, and this is Sunday evening, and hopefully they won't run me ragged tomorrow at work where I can come home and I don't know if I'll try to roll them out, but I may try to roll them in balls and then flatten them. And let's see how that works. So this will be an ongoing project here. Back on our second night of trying to finish these cookies. Uh, as you see, I've got two more trays here ready to go. Uh, oven preheated to... Oh, no, I didn't get it preheated enough. Try that again. 400. Uh, preheated to 400. Lessons I learned from last night. Um, first off, do not use the nonstick foil. It gets apparently much hotter underneath there and scorches the bottom of the cookies. Didn't even make it nine minutes and they were scorched. Calls for 10 minutes of cooking. Um, my batter was too soft to really work with and after 24 hours in the refrigerator, it's still a little too soft. On this tray right here, I started out trying to roll these ones along here and flatten them out. Well, it was just sticking to my hand, so I decided to heck with it. I'm just going to make drop cookies out of them. They still tasted good that way. Um, what I tasted of last night, they're very soft. I like them, um, but if I were going to make them again, I would probably maybe use, uh, I hate to use Crisco, maybe coconut oil. I might try these again with some coconut oil and see if the consistency is a little better for rolling out and flattening or actually rolling out with a rolling pin. Uh, I just did not have the energy to do that much extra work tonight after being at work all day. So we're going to get these put in the oven, and once again, my dog is in the background, wanting in, without fail. Uh, get these put in the oven, and we'll see how these two batches turn out. Alright, we've got all our cookies done. I had to play with the temperature on my cranky 
oven quite a bit. I finally had the last batch down to um, I think 350 and keeping a close eye on it. Um, I kind of like the ones that got a little more gold tone to them. This batch over here, I tried uh, sprinkling a little sugar on top just to see how they would if they would come out looking more like a sugar cookie that you're that you think of you, you think of a sugar cookie as coated with sugar well it just kind of sank into the dough but anyway I'm I'm pleased with the results they have a good flavor to them let me uh, find one of these I'm gonna do one of the ones that cooked Let's see if I can get you up here It'll focus in. I'm hoping I have enough light. But right in there you can see the bits of candied lemon peel that we used. These have a very taste a little bit. Very light lemon flavor to them. Excellent with some hot tea. It's not overbearing sweet, but it is sweet. So, I'd say this is a, a win keeper recipe. I had to play with it a little bit to get it to the point I like it. Mm. Another nibble. I would, I would make these again. As I said earlier, I think I would try, instead of using butter, even though I really like the buttery flavor you know, of, of cookies, that it, that it gives to the cookies. Um, I might try some coconut oil in there or maybe even half and half to one stick of butter and half a cup of coconut oil. That'd be interesting to try. Well, anyway, thank you for joining me on this project. Hopefully you've learned something. I'm, I'm sure you've learned that I don't follow recipes very well. I tend to do my own thing sometimes. I try, but sometimes I think, ah, that would be better. Let me try this. Um, anyway, um, if you'd like this recipe, I'm not going to print it at the bottom due to copyright issues and such, but let me grab the cookbook and I'll read it to you one more time. Alright, this was one cup of fat, one and a half cups of sugar, three eggs, one cup of finely chopped orange peel, lemon peel, citrus peel, whatever your choice may be, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, four to five cups of sifted flour, two-thirds cup of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla or orange extract. Cream your fat, add sugar, eggs, peel, and then add your dry ingredients, alternating with milk and extract. I just put my extract into the milk. Roll and cut or shape in balls and flatten out. Bake in a moderately hot oven, 400 degrees, for 10 minutes. Well, you may have to play with your oven and the timing on that too, because most of mine were about 8 to 9, nine and a half minutes. 10 minutes, I tend to burn it. So, anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, like, comment. Ask questions if you would, and please subscribe. Thank you, and happy cooking.